Hi, my name's Maddie Heath. I'm a final year medical student and today I'm going to be talking about Seymour fractures. Um, so we'll start with the definition. Um, so a Seymour fracture is a displaced fracture of the juxta epiphyseal region of the distal phalanx with an associated nail bed injury and it occurs in skeletally immature individuals. Um, the fracture type was first described by Scottish orthopaedic surgeon N. Seymour in 1966. Um, but just to note that the definition is not unanimous. Um, while the majority of sources describe an open fracture, um, several still include co closed injuries. And this is because Seymour's original description of the fracture did not actually um, comment on the presence or absence of a nail bed injury. Um, this sort of discrepancy in the definition becomes important later when we discuss um, management. So the um, specific incidence of Seymour fractures is actually unreported, but to give you a bit of an idea, um, the annual incidence of phalangeal fractures in children is 2.7%. Of those, 20 to 30% involve um, the physis. So um, in terms of the um, anatomic location of Seymour fractures, um, the most common site of injury is the middle finger. Um, there are three types of physeal fractures that are recognised. Um, the first is metaphyseal fractures that are one to two millimetres distal to the epiphyseal plate. And the second and third of the Salter Harris have one and two fractures. And finally, you can um, sort of classify the type of nail bed injury. So um, either a simple nail bed laceration, um, a nail plate subluxation or, or interposition of soft tissue at the fracture site. So most commonly these injuries occur as a result of direct trauma or crash injuries. So for example, children playing sport or having their finger caught in the door. Um, and the injury causes this sort of characteristic flexed posturing of the distal phalanx. Um, and this is ultimately due to um, an imbalance between the location of the flexor and extensor tendons at the level of the fracture. So you can sort of see here in the image that um, the extensor tendon inserts into the epiphysis of the distal phalanx, while the flexor tendon inserts into the metaphysis of the distal phalanx. Um, so given the extensor tendon insertion is more proximal than the flexor tendon and the fracture occurs between the two, um, the flexor tendon sort of um, overrides the, the extensor tendon and results in this flex, um, sort of characteristic flexed posturing. So um, in terms of presentation, um, often um, these injuries will be um, will appear as a mallet deformity and can often be missed or misdiagnosed as a mallet deformity. Um, characteristically, there'll be um, a significant amount of ecchymosis and swelling, and you may notice the nail plate lying superficial to the epinicule fold, and that'll sort of um, present itself as the lanula appearing large and possibly um, longer than the nail plate on the contralateral uninjured side. So um, in terms of imaging, um, on plain x-ray, on the PA view, um, the, the finger may appear normal. You may be able to see a widened physis, but it's really on the lateral view that um, the injury can sort of be appreciated. Um, this is where you may see a widened physis or displacement between the epiphysis or the and the metaphysis, or um, you may also see apex dorsal angulations. So you know that fixed sort of that flex posturing of the finger. Um, sort of the key differential for this injury is a mallet finger. Um, the difference being that a mallet finger line or the fracture line in a mallet finger enters the DIPJ, while in a Seymour fracture, the fracture sort of just traverses the physis but doesn't actually enter the joint. So um, the management um, of Seymour fractures um, is sort of, I suppose, debated and that's a result of um, the sort of um, discrepancy in the accepted definition. Um, for the purposes of this talk, I'll talk about all the management options. Um, so um, unanimously, it's agreed that prophylactic antibiotics should be um, given for all cases in children. Um, typically that's keprazolin or clindamycin. Um, so in terms of non-operative, I suppose, yeah, there are sort of two broad arms, non-operative management or operative management. In terms of non-operative management, this involves closed reduction and splinting. Um, 
and it's only appropriate for minimally displaced closed fractures where there's no interposition of soft tissue at the fracture site. Um, but as I've mentioned, that this sort of approach requires um, acceptance of the um, definition of there being a of a single fracture being a closed being possibly being a closed fracture. Um, then in terms of the operative management there are again two options so either closed reduction and pinning across the DIPJ um, this is for closed fractures where there's no interposition of soft tissue at the fracture site um, but where the flat fractures are displaced and then the final option is open reduction and pinning across the DIPJ and nail bed repair this um, open technique has fewer complications um, and seems to be the more accepted method um, or accepted practice currently so the technique um, given this is an for an open fracture is that you um, need to hyperflex the digit to allow removal of the interposed soft tissue from the fracture site. Um, it requires thorough irrigation and debridement and then anatomical reduction of the fracture and with retrograde KY fixation that crosses both the fracture site and the DIPJ and finally um, repair of the nail bed injury. So. Uh, the complication rate um, of seymour fractures is relatively high um, and frequently or commonly this is due to either late presentation or misdiagnosis. Uh, the complications include nail dystrophy, um, growth disturbance of the distal phalanx and nail, secondary fracture displacement, chronic osteomyelitis and this is um, mostly due to failure to treat the fracture as an open fracture. Um, and finally, a flexion deformity. So in summary, um, Seymour fractures are displaced distal phalangeal physeal fractures with an associated nail bed injury. Um, clinically, they're diagnosed with the presence of the nail plate lying superficial to the epinicule fold, um, but on a plain radiograph, you may see a widened physis or dorsal angulation. Um, no, a note that the complication rate is high um, and it's um, particularly so if uh, the, these fractures are left um, untreated or misdiagnosed. And um, the management typically centres around antibiotics, open reduction and pinning across the DIPJ with nail bed repair. Um, and these are my references. Thank you.